All right, so it is uh, 6.06 .06 in the morning on Thursday the 19th. So we're sort of continuing from last, from last night's video about um, <clears throat> removing, removing data from the model that can skew the, the output, or rather not supplying to the model, tr the model for training data that is essentially random and so when we look at when we look at a daily chart what we see is we have these periods particularly these in pink that where the the volatility in the market goes really high and it, if we equate the volatility with unpredictability which is another way of saying that the volatility equates to randomness if we put the data for the, the, this time period into the pool of data that the machine learns on, then we are essentially polluting the model with randomness. And so it would be equivalent to trying to create a, a machine learning model that can you know, predict the roll of the dice. It's not quite that bad because this is a smaller part of of a, a larger set of data but nonetheless anything that looks like a pattern here that matches something else that's happened before is now going to be um, corrupted all right and so what I with that I thought in mind what I had done is gone back and just stopped data whoops right here I just I, I pulled data only through February 2nd and I trained on that all right and so those result these initial results using a uh, a um, a more conservative entry were shown in last night's video so that would be the uh, the April 18th video and then on the right here is the results with kind of a normal limit entry offset okay and what this shows is not as good right the limit the limit entry offset of minus five was better with using that model all right and when you look at this look at this number this is april 2nd if we go back to the daily chart what we see, you know, April 2nd is right here. All right, so this is still, this is in a pretty volatile time. It's right, it's this, uh, come on, Shane. It's this date right here. All right, so this is still pretty volatile. And so it's, re it's really not a good test. It would be better to test just uh, these days here. Or this would be better, I think, than when I look at it. Um, even this the volatility is pretty high but it, it's more it's more reasonable right it's not it's not crazy uh, and so what I did was I went well using using sort of the regular model with our our normal uh, entry offset this is not very good you're basically just you're flat because you had a couple of good days, um, and you did better with the uh, the more conservative entry offset. You, the way to think about that is your adjustment for the volatility is by being more conservative with your entry. On the left combines this idea with another another idea that we've been pursuing in, in a, on a parallel track. So let's put this one away for the moment. So we're not, we're not confusing it, and then you close that. And on the left, we're doing the same thing in that we're only training through the second, all right, in, in order to pull out this randomness here. And then I trained it starting, I didn't train it, I tested it starting on the ninth. Now, I wanted to test it starting, right, you know, kind of right here on the second, 
or I guess it would be the 27th of February, just when you see it drop down. I didn't do that because that's the H contract and the M contract starts on the 9th and I, it's, it's the, the replays are too painful. They take too long to set up an H and then set up an M. I, I, would, have, I would have had to get up at like 2 a.m. And, and switch it and I'm just not gonna do that. So I started, I started at the 9th and went to sleep. All right, and so we're looking at you know this set of data from here. All right, it's using a model trained only on data through the second. All right, and if you look, and the results are actually quite a bit better. Right, so actually I should have brought. Let me bring up the other one again. Hold on. Um, and really, what you want to do here is look at this is the second, so that's right there. And so just if we just look at the you know don't look at the running p l because you're already really really hot really quite a bit higher on the uh, the window here on the left but if you just look at the 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 daily gains you can see how much better it is on the left than it is on the right okay and so you know the question is well okay well what's different why is that all right and the other, let's take a look here. Let's make sure that I know what I'm talking about. So this is still using a limit your offset of one. Okay, so this, these are our normal settings here. Moderate, moderately aggressive sets of codes with breakouts, limit your offset, and yet, you know, this is, this, this is quite a bit better. Even if we only, even if we only look at this, the exact same period of time here. All right. If we, you know, going back to March, it's really good, right? It's spectacular. Um, and what's what's more about the, what I like on the left is that it, the, the, there's less of these long stretches of of um, taking, you know, max loss days, or just what I call, you know, managing risk days, the days where you just you you, know, you, you 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 take your lumps and then you stop because you're managing your risk. Um, and the difference here is that the model on the left that is used is using the same concept that we had, we had, were started exploring last week, where instead of instead of looking for the success criteria of thirty ticks, we're looking for a longer period. All right, so let, let's let's do a primer on what that means, and then we'll, and then we got to set up for the the trading day here. Um, if you look at any bar, any bar, you can tell from when you've got the data, you can tell what happened, right? So from this bar here, I can tell that the market, the market went, it went down X number of ticks in one direction before it went 10 in the other. So 10 ticks is the stop I'm using. Um, in the NASDAQ because it's a 10 deck range bar. All right, so this bar would be categorized as a as a, a bar that met a short target. All right, now the question is, how long is this arrow here? All right, so let's, let's change the color so we know what we're talking about. So how long is the yellow arrow? All right, if, if, I, make the, if I make the yellow arrow really short, then I'm going to get a lot of cases where bars are meeting the, meeting a target long or short. Okay, if I make it really long, I'm going to get much fewer cases, a lot fewer. Depending, the longer this arrow gets, the fewer and fewer cases I'm, I'm going to show where the system actually met the target. And, and we this is important because we use this criteria for the machine learning system to understand you know look at the patterns of order flow and tell me if you met a long target met a short target or didn't do it or didn't do either okay and so somewhere in between here in between you know a really big number and a really small number is the place where we want to be in terms of identifying for the machine learning system consider this successful and it's something that it, it's a trade i want to take versus i just want to stand aside Okay, and so we've been using 30, all right, which is three times the risk, 
that's a very reasonable number in, just in, in terms of trading that's a reason that's a reasonable number to go for all right if you can get three times your risk then you, you actually you, you can do pretty well that's just that's just experience talking all right um, but it occurred to me particularly as we were dealing with all this volatility through February and March that we could get the machine learning system to be more selective if we said okay well don't you know don't use 30 use something bigger so I, I doubled it to 60 and what we see from that is that the you know as a result there are less bars that meet the criteria for success and so the natural logical result from that is that the machine learning system sees fewer opportunities in real time and so you take less you take less trades ultimately um, <clears throat> and my initial attempt was just to double it i went from 30 to 60. all right and there's some other mathematical analysis that go, that goes on that we won't get into here but it's it suggested to me that 60 was too big a number and so i started experimenting with you know sort of numbers in between these these levels uh, very much like a just like a physicist examining natural phenomena trying to find the pro find, trying to find its properties and I, I I settled on one that's in between 30 and 60 and created a model using that and that's what we're looking at here is where the model is built on data only through the second of February so we don't have that randomness in there and it's built using a, a target that's further out so we expect it to be a little bit more uh, discriminating in its choices on when to get long and when to get short and that's the result for March 9th through yesterday okay so that's pretty spectacular now the question the next the obvious next step is um, is there the obvious next step is to I, I you know sort of identify is that number for the target fixed or is it variable something I've been looking at but it's actually fairly difficult to figure out certainly that this fixed number look, is working pretty well um, and then the next thing is well automatically pull out this data this this data that's too volatile so that we don't um, we still get data that that we that we want so you know we I, I, theoretically here we really want to include the data in this zone right and so that's actually very easy for me to do to exclude data that is that meets some criteria um, it's just a matter of determining what is that criteria all right now typically we could use what we're looking at on screen which is look at the average daily range and if it's higher than a certain amount don't don't include that data that would be a, a very reasonable thing to do the other would be to do something that we do every day which is look at the overnight range and if it's um, above a certain value assume that's going to be a volatile, a volatile day and exclude that data all right so i'll start experimenting with that to um, see what that gives me and because ulti ultimately i want it i want i want the data that, that's a current as much as possible all right so i want this piece in here i can't just stop at february 2nd okay now we're done all right and and here as well as the as the volatility starts to settle down we want that data in our models all right but what we don't want is are the pink the pink circles we want to clearly there's a there's a big impact all right so just the, the experimental results demonstrate that all right um, the other interesting thing here just from an analysis perspective is if you look on here you can see these days march 22nd uh the 26th the 27th where th th these were really volatile days big move days all right let's look at those results here's the 22nd here's the 23rd 
All right. So in other words, I actually have the model stopping. The machine learning system stops at $1,000. It might, it might have made more. I don't know. It might have made less. It might have given it all back. But the point is that while the model is built using data that is doesn't include super volatile days, when you do run into these days, you end up doing, you can end up doing very well. Okay. So with that in mind, let's uh, let's get set up for the day, and then I can see that this particular this is a the path to continue to go down here in terms of. Uh, um, you know, future model building. At a minimum, we'll just use the February 2nd model that you were looking at here on the left, you know, on Monday. That's the worst case. The best case is we take this model and we, we add in the less volatile days. If I can get that, I'm not sure if I can get that done in time. All right, so we'll see. It's going to be a busy few days here.